Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another weekly, uh, what, are, what are we calling this? Live stream? Yeah, that's what they're called. Uh, our weekly live stream every Friday. I'm here at 2 p.m. Eastern. Well, almost every Friday. Sometimes I take vacation. Uh, but anyway, today is going to be a fun one. Uh, today, I was informed by the reviews.org team that this week we had uh, National Ask a Stupid Question Day. I think that was on Monday, but I don't live stream on Mondays. So here we are on Friday. Uh, and we asked uh, we asked all of you to submit your stupid streaming questions uh, for our for our collective general amusement. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to answer some really really dumb questions. Some of them actually aren't that dumb. If I'm being honest, some of you asked questions that you might think are dumb, but they are not. They are not stupid questions. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the plan today. Uh, let's say hello to people who are here. William Mack, uh, Aviar, Shoaib Hassan, welcome back. New uh, new profile pic and everything. Very nice. Uh, Jaden, looks like you got your question answered. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, we, I, did do a, I did do a video on this. Uh, Jaden asked if I could do a video on smart TV versus streaming. Um, and I did, uh, I mean, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, you won't, uh, you won't be able to see this link, but if you're on YouTube, then you can go click on that link in the, uh, in the chat. Um, and I did do that, a video on smart TVs versus streaming uh, or sorry, smart TVs versus streaming devices. So like, should you get a Roku TV or a Roku stick? Um, and I basically the conclusion I came to in that video, if I recall correctly, it's been like two years. Uh, the video, or sorry, the conclusion I came to was that in general, you'll get better performance out of the devices than you will out of the smart TVs. Um, and also more at like cheaper longevity. So if you bought a smart TV, if you like, if you bought a Roku TV back in 2017 or something, it's not going to hold up as well over, you know, updates and whatnot, uh, as it will, as uh, it's not going to hold up as well software wise. Um, and so, uh, so getting devices is a cheaper way to stay current, right? So 30 bucks or 40 bucks for a device versus, you know, five, six, seven, 800 bucks for a TV. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay. So there you go. Um, all right. So before we get to any stupid questions, I'll just remind you right there, reviews.org slash giveaways. Uh, make sure you go there. And uh, in fact, you know, I'll put a, uh, a link in the comment slash giveaways link in the chat so i i don't know if it'll actually link that because i didn't put the little https thing on there but anyway that's where you go <laughs> go to reviews oh wait i didn't even put that on uh on facebook uh so, oh well uh yeah reviews.org slash giveaways um and uh yes last week it was the casa the four pack of casa smart light bulbs full color spectrum light bulbs a really fantastic uh, prize, I thought. And the winner for that one was Joseph Husaski. I hope I'm saying that right. Joe, I'm going to go with Joe. Joe, congratulations. I hope you're watching. If you're not, that's okay. We're still going to email Joe. Uh, maybe he'll tune in a little bit later. But uh, yeah, so congratulations to Joe. And uh, this week, we are doing another uh, one year subscription to Disney plus. This is uh, always a popular one. Um, and if you, even if you already have a subscription to Disney plus, you are still eligible to win. Uh, we'll don't, don't worry. We'll still take care of you. So, um, yeah, that's what's going on. Let's, so let's take that off. And, uh, and yeah, let's talk about some, some stupid questions, shall we? That's what we're all here for. So, uh, hello to everybody else. Tammy, Sylvia. Sylvia, I believe you asked quite a few questions. So I've got a couple of yours in the mix. Um, and uh, yeah, so just so you know, the way this works, so people who submitted questions did so on a, a Google sheet um, and they could submit their name or not. Some, uh, Many did it anonymously and that's fine. Um, but uh, I didn't get access to that Google sheet until just a few minutes ago. Uh, so I got access to it just long enough to, uh, you know, copy and paste some things so I could show you the questions here uh, on the stream. But I, I haven't seen them uh, before that. So these are more or less fresh answers. I, uh, in fact, I've forgotten most of what I copied and pasted. So, uh, so hello to Sylvia who submitted a few. Uh, William Mack did as well. Uh, Deborah, hello. 
Frayden. Hello, what's a TV? Says Shoeb. Okay, so yeah, and and oh, that's the other thing I was gonna say is uh, if you have questions that you didn't get to submit um, on the sheet, then you can submit them here, uh, and I may put them up on the screen and uh, answer them here. So. Uh, this this is a great question from William Mack, a fantastic uh, streaming question. Actually, it does feed into some streaming stuff later. My first stupid question is, who's tied with the Red Sox to get the last playoff position in the AL? Here's my oh, my hat is on the other side of the room. I wish I had my hat. Uh, I'm you guys. I if you're not baseball fans, I've already lost you. But I'm so freaking excited. Um, so yeah, all right. Uh, that's okay. So, show up. You didn't know about the sheets. You can still ask questions. I can't guarantee that I'll see everything. You know, we'll be responding to some questions. But let's uh, let's get started with um, let's get started with some questions here. So, uh, <laughs> I do I do remember copying and pasting this one. Why is the Directv Now app called DStream? Have you guys seen this? It's so fantastic. I want to see if I can. <laughs> oh man. It's so good. Um, why, why? Oh, man, there's so many things called D-Stream. That's so funny. So I can't even pull it up. I could maybe show you on my TV. Uh, how did that name get through approval? Sounds like something you'd hear in a urology clinic. <laughs> I was really confused. I was uh, clicking through my Roku. In fact, I think I was doing it during one of these live streams. I'm clicking through my uh, Roku menu on the TV right here behind me. And... Um, <laughs> and uh come across this d stream and i'm like i didn't download something called d stream what is this and i click on its direct tv now's uh, uh streaming app <laughs> yeah. i had about the same reaction like it's a bit like uh when peacock announced the name peacock and the the entire world collectively uh told about the same three to five jokes over and over and over again yeah, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. How? Do, okay, so the question is, <laughs> why is it called? I, I'm I am going to try to answer these. Okay, these are some of them are stupid questions. Some of them are deliberately stupid, but we're gonna take them seriously. Try to answer them. Why is it stands for Directv? Okay, how did that name get through approvals? Just because you wear a suit doesn't mean you're smart. How about that? Uh, <laughs> sounds like something you'd hear in a urology clinic from rhymes with schmundy fantastic uh that's so good okay so let's see what else we got um all right so let's go to you guys um let's see well okay first of all freighton thank you um and i and because your team is in the nl i cheer for them too probably uh okay what do we do now that low cast is gone this is a great question uh, from K. Daryl Bowles. What do we do now that Lowcast is gone? <sighs> Antenna, if you can. Um, if you can't. Okay. So, oops. The question is, what were you using Lowcast for? Because I know um, a lot of people were using it for local news. Excuse me. Wow. Itchy nose. Um a lot of uh, a lot of people were using it for local news. Sometimes you're just using it for local channels, period. You just want to have them on. If you want to have a local channel on all the time, that's going to be tough. If you don't have Lowcast, you don't have a uh, an antenna, or an antenna doesn't work. You know, maybe you're too far away from the uh, the um, broadcast antenna, um, and. You, maybe you don't want to pay for it. Okay, so the easiest thing to do would be to sign up for probably YouTube TV, but that's, you know, it's 65 bucks a month to start, and maybe you don't want to spend that, but that is a good way to, an easy way to get your local channels. So if you don't want to do that, um, if you're using it for local news, then you can still get some local news feeds through places like Haystack News. Um, so Haystack uh, will bring in news feeds from uh, national sources and your local sources. Um, it won't necessarily pull in all of your local channels, uh, but if you're not picky, then it, like I get uh, the Fox affiliate here goes to uh, through the Haystack stream. So that's an option for you. There are some other um, some other apps out there. So that's a, that's actually a great question. That's not a stupid question at all. So. So it doesn't count, but great question. Uh, all right. 
uh okay so this is this is uh, a little more along those lines so question what is low cast all right um low cast was a streaming app uh, a a non-profit that ran a streaming app that pulled in local feeds and allowed you to uh, to watch those uh, to stream those local feeds um they ran into problems as i as i understand it you know i didn't follow the case super closely, but they were taken to court and they lost. Uh, basically, they uh, were pulling in these local feeds and saying, hey, we're a not-for-profit and you don't need to pay for this. Um, but if you donate five bucks a month, we'll lift the commercials that we insert into the service. Um, and because they did that, um, it basically became a uh, pay for uh, a paid for service and so they ran into problems with well it's not really a this isn't really a not-for-profit service anymore eh, something along those lines and so they ended up getting shut down pretty recently just a couple months ago um, and a lot of people were sad about it okay let's do another uh, another submitted one we've done, <laughs> we've done dstream uh here we go how do i sign up to a streaming service from matt shaughnessy that is a stupid question <laughs> <laughs> and a great one. That's a great, stupid question. How do I subscribe to a streaming service? And because I have to take this seriously, um, <laughs> I, will, I will show you. Okay, so this is uh, go incognito mode so that we don't, because uh, so, I'm already logged into all of them on my regular browser. So uh, how do you sign up for a streaming service? Why you pick your streaming server here. Let me share my screen here. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, you should be able to see this now. Okay, so pick your pick your favorite streaming service. Wait, uh, let's see, Disney Plus. Let's see what happens. Okay, so then uh, click on your your first result, Disney Plus. Get the Disney bundle. This is what you do. You get the Disney bundle because it's fantastic. Um, and then it'll ask you to uh, enter your email and enter a credit card. And get special updates if you want it, and then you're you're all signed up. There you go. How do you subscribe to a streaming service? That's how. Thanks for the stupid question, Matt. <laughs> all right, here's one from anonymous. Why do streaming platforms take down my favorite shows? Uh, this is not a stupid question, um, although it's it's becoming it's going to become less of an issue over time. We're already seeing this. Uh, but it was a big issue uh, as recently as a year or two ago, probably uh, two or three years ago, I guess now. Gosh, it's been it's been an arduous but very quick year and a half, hasn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, so basically it's because of licensing. So why do they take down your favorite shows? Well, the license ran out. So Netflix used to do this before they went absolutely hog wild with their uh, Netflix originals. Um, they were licensing content from all these places, from NBC Universal, from Warner Brothers, from, you know, this, that, and the other, from, yeah, all these shows. Um, and now all of those sources, you know, whether it's the BBC or, uh, or Paramount or whatever, um, all of those sources that they were licensing content from are pulling their content back and making their own apps, right? That's why we had this explosion in like 2019, 2020. Uh, we had this explosion of branded streaming apps. So that's why, you know, we got HBO Max, um, we got uh, Paramount Plus, we got Discovery Plus. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, gotta get them all right. Uh, Peacock, uh, you know, what have you. Anyway, we got this explosion of uh, streaming apps because everybody saw how much money, <laughs> how much money Netflix was making off of their content. And they're like, hey, wait a minute. If people really want to watch Friends that bad, we're just going to take it back and put it in our own streaming app you know so that's why friends is on hbo max now and it's not going to go anywhere right because that's a huge money maker um anyway so that's why they take down your favorite shows this still happens the licensing still happens plenty um it's just happening a lot less than it did several years ago and it's going to happen less as time goes on and these uh these branded specific um, streaming apps become more of a thing. So that's actually a very good question. Anonymous, why do they take down my favorite show? All right, so let's see what I missed over here in the uh, comments. Um, all right. 
<laughs> this is a good one. Any update on the NBC YouTube TV situation? This is not a stupid question. This is a great question. Really messing up my football season situation. Um, if you have not yet, um, uh, I'm going to pull up. See, I want to see if this is uh, live yet. Jared Newman, who I've had on the stream before, he is a contributor over at Tech Hive, and he does an absolutely invaluable um a weekly newsletter so i i highly encourage you to go sign up for it if you're interested in issues like this um but here we go so let me uh, let me pull up that page here uh this should do it okay good um let's see so the headline here in fact uh, let's get rid of me i'm not that important youtube tv dropping nbc the latest for uh, affront to cord cutters um and so he kind of details what happened there but this update as of late last night youtube tv and nbc agreed to a short extension of their current contract while they shut up ads while they continue to negotiate their carriage dispute as of now youtube tv has not dropped any nbc channels so there you go and you can read through the rest of this in fact i'll go ahead and uh Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Screw that. So many ads. So many ads. Um, I'm going to drop a link to that so you can go check that out. Uh, that link is in the uh, is in the chat. Let's go check it out. Um, and yeah, like I said, a, a weekly newsletter is so he's uh, Jared is much better than I am about being newsy, you know, keeping up with what happened today, what happened this week, whatever. Um, he's really good at that. So I highly encourage you to uh, read through that. And then I think usually at the end of those, yeah, it, if you get to the end of that article, there's a sign up for that uh, weekly newsletter. So yeah, definitely go check it out. Uh, but yeah, I think it's messing up a lot of people's football season situations. So, all right. Uh -huh -huh. What's okay. This is a very good, stupid question. What's your login to Netflix? Okay. I won't answer everything. Not everything. Come on. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it, it would be nice to get Craig's Netflix subscription password. Well, so the thing is, this is, <laughs> this is why I don't like password sharing just personally. Okay. It's, yeah, there's, there's the legal ramifications. There's the moral issue involved, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, yeah, legality, morality, blah, 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 right? <laughs> For me, if you all got into my Netflix uh, uh, my Netflix account, you'd mess up my algorithm, and I can't have that, okay? I've got my algorithm dialed in. And I think there's actually a question along these lines uh, sometime. Okay, well, we'll get there. We'll get there in just a bit. Um Okay, so we did. Why do streaming platforms take down my favorite show? Let's do the next one. Another anonymous. Is it illegal? Oh, hey, here you go. Great question. Is it illegal to use a VPN to stream shows that aren't available in my country? This is another actually good question. <laughs> so don't worry. Well, I'm sure we'll get to some, some uh, stupid questions in a bit. Is it illegal to use a VPN to stream shows that aren't available in my country? Kind of. Yeah, no, that's it. nobody knows. This is, uh, shall we say, unsettled law, as far as I know. Look, and okay, and this is where I need a like a, and I need a giant asterisk graphic to put right here in the corner. Asterisk, not a lawyer. Okay, not a lawyer. This is not. <laughs> so I don't really, I don't. And even if I were, I you know I might not be the kind of lawyer that follows these particular issues. You know, this is a, this is a very niche topic. Um, but basically, it is, uh, it's a gray area for sure. Um, but the last time I checked, and it has been a little while since I read the terms and conditions for a lot of these uh, streaming companies, but the last I checked, they do have it in their terms and conditions that you not do this. Um, and so even if you're not breaking the law, you might be breaking the rules. And so, I mean, take that for what it's worth, um, anonymous. That's the best I can come up with. Uh, all right, what's the <laughs> what's the difference between streaming and watching? Seriously, <laughs> another anonymous. What's the difference between streaming and watching? Uh, um, well, okay, all right. It's it's a bit like the old uh, tree falling in the forest, right? So if you know, does, does it make a sound? Well, you can stream something and not watch it. 
right? I can, I, in fact, yeah, every time you, <laughs> so if you put on, uh, like, so you're on HBO Max, you put on the old reruns of Friends, uh, and then you go to the bathroom. You are streaming, but you're not watching. There you go. What's the difference? That's your difference. You can stream without watching, but you can't watch without streaming. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're streaming your TV. Uh, yeah, there, oh, well, okay, Sylvia, I think, yeah, same, same thing. There you go. Uh, <laughs> why doesn't, oh, this is another good question. Doggone it, all you anonymousers out there. This is a great question. Why doesn't Netflix have a yearly plan? Why don't they have a yearly plan? So if you hop on uh, Disney Plus or Hulu, don't hit the mic. Um, so why doesn't Netflix do this? Well, frankly, I think it's because Netflix doesn't have to. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. Okay, Netflix doesn't have to. Netflix is so established and is seen as so essential to most people's uh, streaming arsenal, uh, or whatever, <laughs> whatever word you want to use, uh, to their streaming setup, that they don't need to entice people to uh, sign up for a yearly plan. So there, there is that. They're just, they're just so established that they, um, that people don't even, they don't really consider. Excuse me. Most people don't really consider uh, canceling their Netflix subscription. Um, you know, if, if you who are watching right now, uh, you may consider that because uh, we're all streaming junkies here, right? Well, many of us are. Um, and so you may consider that, but most people don't. Um, and so it's just for them, it's, you know, like I have a cell phone plan and I have a Netflix plan, you know, uh, like the things that I need. Um, so they don't need it for that reason. They also, and then there's also the issue of how much content Netflix is putting out. And so you get something like Disney Plus. Um, let's use them as our example. So eight bucks a month or 80 bucks a year. There are a lot of people who watch Disney Plus just for fill in the blank. Usually it's the Mandalorian in this case. If somebody's just watching it for one show, it's going to be the Mandalorian. Maybe they're just watching it for some of the Marvel content. Um, and it, Disney Plus is doing a little bit better of sprinkling out their content, but let's say it's just the Mandalorian. I just want to watch the Mandalorian. Then you sign up for Disney Plus at the end of the year, right? I think the last two seasons have come out in uh, like November-ish. And so you sign up for Disney Plus at the end of the year, the Mandalorian is over, and you cancel it. Same thing is probably happening right now with uh, Apple TV Plus and Ted Lasso, although I don't think they have a yearly plan. Could be mistaken. Uh, but anyway, so the yearly plan for Disney Plus is basically a way for them to say, no, 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 you you do want this streaming service all year round. You, uh, So yeah, go ahead and give us more money. So instead of paying for it for two or three months, you know, so they get $24 from you for three months of Disney Plus, they're getting 80 bucks for you to keep it for the full year, right? So Netflix doesn't really need to do that because they're putting out so much content constantly uh, that there's always something new to watch on Netflix. There's always another show to get wrapped up in. There's always another thing to binge. So, okay, that was a long, that was a long answer because it was a great question. I need, I need some more stupid questions. Okay, I'm going back to the chat. <laughs> Did I just insult you guys? I'm going back to the chat for some stupid questions. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, mm -mm. where are we at stupid question should i in invest in quibi no 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 although now <laughs> that's so that's a good stupid question <laughs> quibi uh Qu oh, quibi oh, if i had one to pour out i would but uh uh quibi's content got bought up by roku so now the question is should you invest in roku as, has Roku already peaked uh, or is now still a good time to invest? Uh, you know, another asterisk, not a financial advisor. I don't know. Up to you. <laughs> uh, Qu Quibi shut down. That's the joke, George. That was the joke. Okay, I was with you, Zachariah. I got it. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Stupid question. 
Why is HBO Max a dark purple and not a lighter Barney purple color? <laughs> um, for the same reason that your little icon right here is a dark purple. It's just much more pleasant, isn't it? Um, it well, oh, you know what? This is actually something I've considered. Okay, why did HBO Max choose purple? And I thought for a little while about this and I was like, okay, what, you know, what is it about their brand? Why did they decide to go purple for HBO Max? Okay, well... You know, I thought uh, maybe it has to do with these shows or that thing. And I was like thinking about psychology around purple, which is my favorite color, by the way. Um, that's why I pipe it in behind me. Um, and then it hit me. It's because it was available and nobody else was using it, or at least nobody else major. So Netflix is red. Disney Plus had blue. Hulu had green, you know, and so on and so on. Um, what Discovery Plus, Paramount Plus at the time. Yeah, no, Paramount Plus now. What was it before? Daggone it. CBS All Access. That's what it was. Paramount Plus used to be CBS All Access. It has like a, a lighter blue, almost a sky blue. You know, so like all these colors were taken. And HBO Max is like, how are we going to differentiate myself? Yeah, purple. So there you go. That's why it's purple. Um, all right. <laughs> I just told them, show. I don't tell them. I'm still getting Disney Plus for free from Verizon, even though I ended my internet service with them well over a year ago. <gasps> Scandal. Scandal. All right. Interesting. Why are Spectrum and Cablevision the only TV app providers you can use on Apple TV? I don't know. I didn't know that was the case. I, you know, fun fact, actually. Um, I just got a delivery yesterday. I, I have used this, but I haven't had it in my home. And so I'm excited to uh, use it more extensively. But I, I finally got the new Apple TV 4K. So I will find out. Um, it's a little late now for me to be doing an Apple TV 4K review. You know, I, I, in fact, I think uh, uh, Tashaka did one of those on our channel. So he stepped into my shoes and did a streaming device review. So uh, so this isn't for review purposes per se, but I'm going to be using it to test some things uh, with premium devices. So I I, uh, I got the Apple TV. Um, let's see, what else did I get? Got the, uh, this is the new version. Well, it's like a year old now or more, but the new Roku Ultra. Ah. Um, and so, yeah, like these are all devices that I have used and even have had in my home. But, you know, we some of them are stuck back in the locked office. Some of them we gave away to viewers. That's how much we love you guys. We give away stuff that we know we're just going to have to buy again later. <laughs> um, Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about this one. Uh there we go. I have had the uh, the NVIDIA Shield, but not the Shield Pro. So I got the Pro model. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of like uh, premium device uh, comparisons and whatnot. Um, and then this one is the uh, Fire TV Cube, the second gen, whatever, the new, the new version that came out like two years ago, whatever. But I'm getting all these so I can do some premium device uh, comparisons and the uh, the new Fire Stick. 4K Max is coming out, I think, a week from today or a week from yesterday. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I'm going to be doing some comparisons with the Cube and the old the old Fire Stick 4K and the new Fire Stick 4K Max and uh, all that. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, all right. What else am I missing? Oh, man, you guys are prolific in the chat today. So I appreciate that. I just hope I don't miss anything. Oh, George says, it'll be gone in 10 years, just like Blockbuster. Most people don't anticipate it until it actually happens. Uh, I'll disagree with you. It may not look the same as it does now in 10 years, but Netflix will still be around. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, back to my Netflix rant. Yeah, rightfully cocky, yeah, kind of. That's a whole, that's a whole thing. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. This is uh, why do I stink at the chat? Also, I keep getting brief screens here. I don't know what that means exactly, but uh, hey, you got the emojis down, so you don't stink at chat. I think that's how it works, right? 
Ooh, where do you get C-SPAN? You know what? Do I not have C-SPAN on my Roku? That would be weird if I didn't. Uh, we're going to search some channels here. Because I think C-SPAN... No, they don't have... Really? Does C-SPAN not have a streaming app? Uh, TV everywhere. Okay, so they do have... Gosh. Uh, okay, so let me let me uh, show you my screen here. Um, okay, I just C-SPAN streaming app. It looks like uh, you can get the TV everywhere and do, do a live stream. And you can also just live stream it on your browser. So there you go. Great question. Not a stupid question. Uh, oh, Apple TV Plus does have a yearly plan, says Freighton. That's good to know. Um, I probably knew that at one point and forgot it. <laughs> I have a terrible memory, you guys. It's terrible. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go back and do some of the other ones that have been submitted, and then I'll come back to the chat, okay? I know I've missed a couple, but that's okay. Uh, 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 just Okay, so hi there. <laughs> Asked, just put ad and commercials and make free. So I assume what you're talking about is, um, is why... Why does something like Netflix? Okay, Netflix is a paid app. You pay, you know, what is it now? 14 bucks a month for the middle tier, something like that. Pay 14 bucks a month and uh, you get all this content. You never have to watch commercials. Why don't they just do an ad supported version and make it free? Well, ads, it's, it's a volatile system. It's uh, it's an established system in the old world, right? In the old cable satellite world, ads were somewhat reliable in, you know, like in the, the age of uh, Nielsen ratings and all that stuff. Now, ads are more volatile, um, and less reliable than the customer's dollars. At least as I understand it, I'm happy to be proven wrong. If there's, uh, you know, uh, you know, some executive from <laughs> Discovery Plus or Roku or HBO or you know Warner Media, whatever, if they want to come correct me on the live stream, I'd love to have them. But my uh, having run, <laughs> having run channels, not just this one, but uh, you know, various entities where you count on ads, it's tough. Um, and you never know especially with something as direct as paying for ads on um, like a certain channel or whatever. Uh, there's always the chance that the advertiser for whatever reason will pull out. Uh, so, you know, they, they don't want to advertise anymore. Uh, this, they, the ad rates go down. Um, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to pick up advertisers for something that's really um, controversial, you know, like a cable news show or something. And the host says something outrageous and so a bunch of advertisers cancel their contracts. You know, it's it's a little more volatile that way. And so if you can get somebody to sign up for a service at five bucks a month or 15 bucks a month, um, or, you know, like I was saying earlier with Disney Plus, if you can get them to pay you 80 bucks a year to stick around, that 80 bucks, 80 bucks, and you can take it to the bank. Um, and there's no, nobody's going to, uh, <laughs> nobody's going to come along and snatch that 80 bucks away and you know take their toy back to their sandbox okay fine yeah you, know, you know what i mean there are extenuating circumstances but that is a less volatile system than the ad supported one so why not do that i think that's why so all right where are we at where are we at c-span now they just released c-span now interesting okay maybe there's a dash in it okay we're gonna try this again C span no okay you know what i'll just do voice search c span now let's see what happens 
uh, anime channel 24 seven in Spanish is not installed. So <laughs> it's not on Roku anyway, <laughs> at least not that I can find. I'll have to make a, a more concerted effort to check it out later. Um, I have a whole, I have a whole rant about how awful C-SPAN is, but I'll save it for another day. Um, <laughs> all right. C-SPAN plus the next step. There you go. Yeah. I like it. That's what we need. Um, Hmm, interesting. Amanda asks, will every streaming service ever add all the content known to mankind, you know, every movie and TV show ever made in the near future, something like that? Or will all the streaming services be merged? No, they won't be merged. Um, no. I mean, there may be, it, well, okay, some of the smaller ones might merge, you know, so right now we have, I don't know, a dozen at least at least a dozen like truly major paid streaming services um and so you might see a couple of the smaller ones merge to form larger entities but uh uh n like there'll never be one streaming service to rule them all mm -hmm. yeah that used to be netflix it's not anymore i mean it kind of is but it's <laughs> you know what i mean um yeah i don't think so All right. <laughs> Ads alone can't pay all these actors astronomical paychecks. Uh, ain't that the truth? Uh, although you might be surprised. Um, the, so 2004, the cast of Friends, so six people in the main cast, they were making a million dollars an episode. So six million bucks just for your main cast. And then we're not talking about paying guest stars or extras. And we're not talking about production. We're not talking about, uh, you know, editing and all the lighting and sound and all the, the people that go into an actual production. So six million bucks plus all the other stuff to produce an episode of Friends. And they were making, they were making their money back on ads alone. Yeah. So take that for what it's worth uh let's see oh yeah you know this is this is a great point actually alex a lot of people skip ads i assume you mean skip ads um i'd love to be able to sip my ads right there's that one going around right now um if sweat is your body's way of cooling you down then condescension the con, con condescension <laughs> then condensation is a beer's way of saying drink me and i'm sure a lot of people would love to be able to sip that ad but uh, <laughs> yeah a lot of people skip ads and so that's another way that it's it's more volatile because uh it's an expectation that we all have now that you be able to skip ads you know whether you dvr something or you're watching it on youtube or whatever we expect to be able to skip ads and that drives down the price of advertising because you know if, if somebody is um, if somebody's watching a one-hour drama in 1995, you know, they're watching NYPD Blue or something, um, and uh, these people are really invested in the show, you kind of got a captive audience, right? So commercials come on, they're going to sit through the commercials, so you can charge more. Uh, but now with, with DVRs and skipping ads on YouTube or whatever else, you can't guarantee that somebody who's watching the show will watch the ad. So that drives the ad rate down uh, compared to what it used to be. Uh, okay. Are you going to get a haircut, Craig? Um, eh, maybe. Maybe. I do have... Uh, I had long hair. If you go back to like the ancient days, 2016, right? When we started this channel, I had a long haircut. It wasn't great. I mean, not that this one's great, <laughs> but I had a long haircut. And my plan was to go as uh, Severus Snape for Halloween. Uh, and I got all the way to like October 8th and I forgot and I went and got a haircut. And then I remembered on the drive back to the office, uh, after my lunch break and, uh, and I just, well, I was so mad at myself cause I'd forgotten that I was going to do Snape for Halloween. Uh, so I at least need to make it to the end of this month. Okay. It's, it's October now I've got my long hair. I can do Snape. So we'll see. Um, I really want to debate you on ads, says George. I really don't agree with your opinion on the ads. Well, I, you know, George, you seem like the kind of guy who would want to debate me about a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, throw, hey, throw your opinion in the chat. 
I'd love to hear it. Um, okay. Ooh, Rick says, I'm finally going to pull the trigger on buying a Roku device. Very nice. What are you thinking you're going you're gonna to get? Okay, let's go back to some stupid questions. See if we've got any more stupid questions. Uh, oh, man. Okay. This one was so long that I couldn't put it on uh, one of those little things. So I'm going to I'm gonna make it the new ticker. Okay. If the streaming service that I relied on to get NBC and Fox for the Seahawks games this year abruptly discontinues itself, why is it that another service doesn't pick up the slack and offer... So you guys are seeing this, right? It's right below me. Why doesn't another service pick up the slack and offer just locals for a decent price? Further, why are media giants so damn greedy? Don't they realize not everyone can... I wish I could speed this up. Can afford 65 bucks for streaming. It's... Uh, don't they realize that not everyone can get local channels with an antenna? Don't they realize? <laughs> I love how long this is. Don't they realize that if I could pick them up on an antenna, I wouldn't be paying them anything. Many rural area people need emergency news. It's so stupid. Have fun, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I love this one from William Max. So uh, yeah, it's I'm gonna I'm gonna let this one scroll for a little while. <laughs> Why is it that another service doesn't just pick up the slack uh, and offer just locals for a decent price? Basically, they the rules are different for um, the rules are different for network channels, and I don't understand all the ins and outs. But there are contractual obligations. Uh, and whatnot and like ways that they're allowed to broadcast and um so it's it, a lot of it comes down to these local channels carry things like local sports you know in fact there's another uh let, let's go ahead and throw this one up here yeah i can do them both at the same time so william mack again asked why is it the root sports doesn't have an app or some way to stream their sports fans to sports fans their programming same question on the pac-12 network i'm talking about a standalone package yeah and it it just comes down to um to the contracts that they have in place and how much money they feel like they can make. So something like root sports. So that's, um, I think there are a few different root sports around. Um, uh, I watch root sports to watch the Mariners, uh, you know, or the Sounders or the Seahawks or whatever. Um, so those, those channels have a limited audience compared to some of the, the huge national networks. Right. So, um, so it might make less economical sense to go pure streaming when they can get a guaranteed contract and get a certain amount of money um, from saying, no, we're only going to broadcast on Root Sports, like locally, right? And, you know, people can pipe that in through certain ways, but uh, but why don't they get a, a, a dedicated streaming app? You know, why do they just do MLB TV or whatever? Um, I think it's because they can't like root sports Northwest can't pull in viewers or at least not very many, right. They're not going to pull in many viewers from huge Metro areas like, uh, you know, like the Northeast or uh, the Midwest or whatever, California. They're not, they're, they're limited in their, um, in their potential appeal. Right. So that's best I can come up with. Um, it's something that I would love to understand a little bit better. In fact, you know, that would make a good live stream, right? If I did an interview with uh, somebody, you know, like a an executive from one of those places who could explain the economics of the situation to the best of their uh, their PR ability, that'd be cool. I would like that. Um, all right. Sylvia asked, why is there a hamster on my Roku? That is a stupid question. <laughs> now, I assume you mean that there is a literal hamster on your Roku like on your Roku device, sitting on your yeah, your entertainment unit or shelf or whatever. Why is there a hamster on your Roku? Because it's warm. That's what I'm going with. If you're not, if you're not literally talking about a physical hamster on a physical Roku device, then, oh, I'm, did I go blurry? I went blurry, didn't I? You know, sometimes it does that. There we go. Uh, catch up to me. Um, if you're talking about something else, this is actually something that does drive me crazy about Roku, where you can kind of see a little corner of the TV behind me. Um, so Roku has themes, the backgrounds, right? The themes. And you can set your own theme. And that's great. 
right up until Roku decides to change it. And it drives me crazy. It's actually one of my least favorite things about Roku is you never quite know what your background is going to look like when you turn on the TV. And so, um, you know, it, it could be for an event coming up or you know, like a holiday. So sometimes they just change it like, oh, it's the 4th of July. Let's make everybody in America have a, a flag background on their Roku devices or, you know, Halloween or whatever. And I do not care for that. So why is there a hamster on your Roku? Maybe because they changed the theme to a hamster theme without telling you, without asking you, without your permission. Oh, I hate that. All right. Oh, man, I missed so many questions, you guys, or so many comments, at least. All right. So let's... Oh, you know what? Thank you, Marie. I like long hair. Leave it. Will you show us your Halloween costume? Yeah, uh, maybe I will. Hang on. What day is Halloween this year? It's on It's on a Sunday. So if I can get it done by the 29th, I'll be streaming on the 29th. Uh, then, uh, then yeah. Uh, so I, uh, a friend of mine, she is a, she's a seamstress and she makes, she's a costumer for uh, local theaters. So um, what, what do you, what do you call it? Um, community theater. Yeah. So she does costuming for them. So I was like, Hey, can you make me a, a Snape costume? She's like, she's like, you're not the first person to ask. So, <laughs> so she's going to make a few of them and uh, yeah, she can get it done by then. Then I will show you my Halloween costume. Uh, okay. Where can I find Disney Minus? That is an appropriately stupid question. I love it. This I need more stupid questions like this. Where can I find Disney Minus? Um, in the Upside Down, right? But that's on Netflix. So I don't know. I don't know what the Disney equivalent would be. <laughs> Westview, New Jersey, with the Hex, where uh, WandaVision took place, maybe. Uh, there you go. Okay. Mm, okay, Why, this, is, this is actually a really good question. Why do diff, different studios have different prices for their streaming services? Like Paramount Plus and Peacock start at five bucks, while Disney Plus starts at eight bucks, HBO Max starts at 10. <sighs> really good question. So um, there's one that you don't list here, and I think it's a really, really great illustration, and that is uh, Discovery Plus. So Discovery Plus, if I recall correctly, starts at five bucks a month. Might be six, but I think it's five. Um, anyway, so why is it so cheap compared to something like HBO Max, which starts at 10 if you want to watch ads, and 15 if you don't? Um, basically, it comes down to what some... I, I'm not going to find the, the comment again, but somebody else said uh, you can't you can't pay your actors astronomical sums with just ads, right? Well, in this case, the production costs around something like HBO Max. Um, Disney is a, a different case, a slightly different case, uh, but definitely HBO Max, Netflix. Um, they have huge production budgets that they've got to make up. And so kind of, it depends on what you want to watch, but like uh, Discovery Plus is almost entirely unscripted content. Uh, I, I have given up calling it reality TV because that's stupid, um, but it's unscripted content. And um, it is compared to scripted dramas, like I'm, I'm making my way for the first time. I never watched uh, Westworld and I'm making my way through Westworld on HBO right now. Um, and to produce a show like uh, like Westworld compared to something like Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, for instance, you know, whatever unscripted show you want to pull out of a hat. It is so much more expensive. And that's, I think that's what it comes down to. So there's, well, that and one other thing, it's what can we get away with? <laughs> what will people pay? Um, so, you know, the, the correct price for something is whatever people will pay for it, right? Uh, you might have heard that. <laughs> so, there, there is that as well. But really, I think it comes down to, um, yeah, Netflix has to keep raising their rates because they feel the need to keep producing more and more and more original content. Uh, most of it on Netflix, I think most of it is scripted and not unscripted. I, I know they do some unscripted stuff, but, uh, but uh, anyway, so I, if that makes sense, that's why. But that's, that's actually a really good question. Okay. 
wouldn't a studio like Paramount think its content is just as good? Yeah, it probably does think, hey, this this is great content. People will want to watch it, uh, but it's a lot cheaper to produce. And so if you can if you can go to a consumer who's on the fence, who's like, I need to sign up or I, I want to sign up for another streaming service. I want something else to watch. Um, and they're looking at Paramount. So Paramount Plus, what does it start at? Six bucks a month? Uh, they're looking at six bucks a month versus 15 bucks a month for HBO. And they're like, well, gosh, I'll save the money and go with Paramount. So, you know, it might not be as much about, hey, we have awesome content. It's, hey, we have cheap content. So could be something like that. Uh, Jason asks, Craig, can you ever have too many streaming services? Yes. If you can't afford them, you can have too many streaming services. <laughs> uh, so don't go over your budget um it's uh i'm i'm very lucky to uh, have stumbled into uh talking about streaming services uh, for a living because with your support on this channel you know you guys liking the videos sharing the videos all that stuff um it essentially helps us to pay for all these subscriptions and so i consider myself very lucky so i i'm subscribed to just about every streaming service out there except some of the live ones um but if you can't do that, don't do that. So uh, on the other hand, so that's the budgetary version of it. On the other hand, can you have too many streaming services? Like if you're, say you're not paying for them. I just did a video this week on uh, my latest top 10 free Roku apps. Um, no, you can't have too many free apps. Yeah, no, can't do it. Can't do it. Um, so there you go. Okay. What's okay? What's my favorite streaming service right now? It's HBO Max, and that yeah, I kind of judge this one by uh, when I turn on the TV. What's my instinct? What's the first thing I go toward? Right now, it's HBO Max. So that's a great question. Um, is DVD, Blu-ray, physical media officially dead? No, it is not. Absolutely not. Um, it is not dead. That's why uh, Sony released two versions of the PlayStation 5, one with a digital or an optical drive, I should say. Um, part of that was for games, but also part of it was because they knew people needed a way to watch their, uh, you know, 4K, UHD, HDR, Dolby something, whatever, Blu-rays. So, yeah, no, it's not dead. And in fact, I, uh, I, there's an author I know who was just asking about uh, physical books. He said, you know, I don't know what's going on, but in the last few months, my the physical copies of my books are overtaking, the, the sales of my physical copies are overtaking the sales of digital copies. And I, I thought that was forever, you know, trending the other way. Um, and some other authors said, yeah, they saw the same thing. So um, no, physical media, not dead. Don't don't get rid of your physical media unless you truly don't ever want to use it again. So, um, why do I think Netflix is so good? I think it's mediocre at best. Um, yeah, that's totally up to you. I um, I still think Netflix is really good because they tailor their programming to individuals because they create so much content. Uh, one of the things they're able to do with this, and this is kind of my, my standard rant on, or it's not a rant, a rant is negative, right? This is my, my standard uh, thing about Netflix <laughs> is that they, okay, so HBO Max, like I said, is my current favorite. It's the one that I kind of pop into first to see if I want to watch something there. And what HBO Max does, they're, they're, they're becoming the everyman uh, streaming service. So uh, you think about, What's an analogy? Um, uh, indie movies versus blockbusters, right? So the new Fast and Furious movie or James Bond or whatever, these blockbusters, the idea is that they appeal to a very, very wide audience. Um, and HBO Max is going for that model, whereas Netflix is going for more the indie cinema model where it's like, hey, I know not everybody's going to like this, but but somebody will. Um, and so they might put out a dozen titles, major titles this week, excuse me, knowing that for you, amusement park whiz, 
for you, maybe only one or two of those titles out of the dozen would actually even kind of appeal to you. And it might take a few weeks before, you know, like something really appeals to you that they that they put out brand new. Um, and so that's that's what I think is so good about Netflix is they uh, so the more you use Netflix, the more you uh, kind of give their algorithm information about what you like, the more you have the Netflix experience tailored to you to, you know, amusement park whizzes Netflix. Um does that make sense? So it's a very, it's, it becomes more niche over time in a good way, I think. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, who invented the word Netflix? I have no idea. That's actually a great question. Uh, Net Netflix, Netflix. I mean, we can go to the CEOs, the founders of it, but uh, yeah, you were ordering, you were ordering movies over the internet. So uh okay all right i know i've missed a bunch let's see there i i want to make my way through see if there's any other uh questions that were submitted on the um on the google sheet whatever oh here we go oh interesting Ooh, this is not a stupid question what streaming service is the easiest to customize netflix for the reasons i just laid out you can't really customize it <laughs> but it becomes tailored to you over time. So there's there's the answer for that one, I think. All right, we've got just a couple minutes left before uh, my voice gives out. So uh, I'll, I'll uh, uh, answer a few more things from the chat. I'm just uh, trying to catch up, make sure I didn't um, um, <laughs> miss anything oh this is fun caleb uh stumbled across my other channel yeah if you like sci-fi and fantasy you can go check out the legendarium <laughs> i run another youtube channel it's smaller than this one um it's you know more niche I, sh I should say uh but yeah hopefully you like it um if you like sci-fi and fantasy stuff so there you go that's great um why is there no uh why is there no Roku app on my Roku? There's one on my cell phone. Ooh, okay, interesting question. There is a Roku channel app on your Roku, but the, the operating system is the Roku app that I think you're talking about. So you turn on the Roku, mine turned off. Then, boom, I just turned on my Roku app by turning on my TV. So... Well, I mean, what is so what does the Roku app on your phone do for you? It allows you to type, it allows you to navigate, uh, select titles, um, you know, and, and basically it's built into your your Roku device or TV. So mm, do you think that HBO Max and Netflix is just a little overpriced considering the amount of content they always remove? No, I, I don't. I don't. Um I know that we can get attached to certain titles, and we—I I talked early in the stream about um, about the issues around uh, licensing content and how that's becoming less of an issue, um, especially at a place like like Netflix. So, um, no, be, uh, I I don't think they're overpriced. In fact, Netflix I. Netflix still spends more than they take in. They're still spending more money creating content than they're taking in from uh, subscriptions. What, unbelievable as that may sound. What do they have? Between 200 and 250 million subscribers worldwide. Like, that's just unreal. So, uh, yeah, no, I... I I, I know what you mean. It, it is. It can be a tough pill to swallow to pay 15 bucks a month for something, but... Uh, uh, just think of it this way. Um, how often do you use it? So if you are logging into Netflix and watching, let's say, one hour of Netflix every day, on average, uh, then you are paying, so a, what, that would say 30 hours a month at, uh, or, you know, okay, let's say HBO Max so that I can do a nice round 15 bucks a month. Um, you're paying 50 cents a day or 50 cents an hour. If you're watching an hour a day, you're paying 50 cents an hour to watch you, you, this content that you enjoy for whatever reason. Um, no, I, I don't think that's overpriced. If you are, if you sign up, you pay 15 bucks a month and you don't log into it, you don't use it. 
Obviously, it's going to feel overpriced, but if you do use if you do use it, it won't. There, how's that? Um, do you enjoy Peacock? Because personally, I do. Um, I enjoy it fine. It's okay. Um, I don't like their interface very much, but uh, obviously, it's NBC Universal. They've got a lot of great content on there. Um, but yeah, I think their interface could use some work. Okay. Are, ooh, are physical brick and mortar movie theaters officially dead? I am not smart enough to answer that. Poof. Uh, maybe? N no, no, no. We still have AM radio, okay? AM radio, still a thing. And it's still a big thing. It's not as big as it was 50 years ago, right? Uh, but my point with this is that things like that don't die. They might change. They might shrink. You know, I, I <laughs> this was a a few years ago. Uh, it was before the pandemic, so probably like 2019. I was in France, and I went to a movie. Uh, while I was there, I, th I think I went and saw some Marvel movie. Um, and I was blown away. It was like stepping back in time because the movie theaters in the U.S. that I knew had mostly moved to a model where, you know, you've got the cushy recliners and the electronic thing. And, so, you know, many of them allow you to order food and, you know, bring it right to your seat and all that stuff. And so it's just, it was totally different to walk into this French movie theater and they had, it wasn't stadium seating. It was kind of like auditorium seating with a gentle slope and tons of seats, most of them empty. Um, but it felt like I was going to the movies in the eighties. Um, <laughs> and anyway, so my point just being that, you know, they probably in France, I, I haven't been to a movie in France in a few years, but they've probably changed their theaters a little bit, many of them. Um, and so that's that's what happens. These things don't die. They just change. And so there may be fewer of them in the future. They may have less seating, but more opulence, you know, so that those who really value the theater experience feel like they're getting cushier seats and you know more social distancing and you know, i don't know bigger tubs of popcorn as if you needed that um there you go that's yeah that's my that's my best guess it won't die uh okay St stupid stupid questions just turned into the best question i've heard in a long time <laughs> which one was that <laughs> there have been some really good questions yeah you guys it, you're all horrible disappointments to me because this was supposed to be stupid question day and you're all too good at asking questions. So how dare you, first of all? Um, and second of all, thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm curious, William, what question was it that tipped you over into the, the best question I've heard in a long time? I got to know. I got to know before we go. Um, <laughs> Joe agrees. I'm not going to I'm not going to put it up. Uh, just, you know, we're a family friendly thing. So I don't know. It's not that bad, but. Uh, Joe agrees that Peacock's interface is not great. If I didn't get it free, I'd be really upset with it. <laughs> uh, theater use in the pandemic, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, all right, guys, we've been over an hour now, um, and uh, I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, here's what I want you to do. Before we go, first of all, before we go, I, just in case that person is here now, I should announce the last winner from last week uh, is Joe Husaski, uh, won the uh, Casa four pack of uh, full spectrum smart light bulbs. Great, great uh, prize, I guess we'll call it. Um, and if you head here to reviews.org slash giveaways, then you can enter this week to win a one year subscription to Disney plus. Even if you already have Disney plus, you can still enter to win. And we'll still take care of you. Don't worry. Um, so yeah, make sure you go there. Um, and the other thing I want you to do is whether it's in the chat now, or, you know, you come back to this uh, and put a comment in the, uh, the uh, on demand player, whatever. I want to hear if you guys have any ideas for what we could do on this stream uh, for a marathon stream. It's something I've been thinking about doing for a while, a marathon stream uh, where we do, you know, kind of a, um, what, what do they call it? Uh, Subscribe-a-thon, a, a subathon, thon Subathon, yeah, that's what they're called, a subathon. 
kind of sounds like Sabaton, right? The heavy metal band. Um, so if you have any ideas for fun stuff that we could do during these live streams, I'd love to hear it. Um, and I, cause I, yeah, I kind of want to do a marathon stream where we all, uh, you, you can pop in and out for five minutes here and there, but I would be going for eight hours or 12 hours or something like that. So, um, so yeah, if you have any ideas on that, please let me know. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh gosh. Okay. Here we go. Quick fire stuff. Um, Leonard, has anybody tried Paramount plus? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so Randall has got it. I've got it for Star Trek and the NFL. Yeah, it seems about right. Uh, oh, here we go. Do you prefer the office or friends? Friends. Um, cringe comedy sometimes is okay, but doesn't really do it for me. And the office is very cringy. Um, and so while it is funny, like I'm not, this is not me crapping on the office. It's just not quite my thing the way friends is. I love friends. So, um, I like actual jokes. How's that? Um, do you like licensed content or originals better? Whatever is good. Whatever I want to watch. So these days it's, it's a, the needle is going way, way more toward originals. So yeah. Um, do you own any Blu-rays or physical content? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've got a lot of DVDs, Blu-rays, and CDs as well. Um, okay. Parks and Rec is uh, a little bit along the same lines as The Office, but then it kind of got away from the cringe and put a little more heart into it. Uh, so I, I do think it's better than The Office if only for the character of, uh, uh, what, what's his name? Um, <laughs> what's his name? Parks and Rec. Uh, oh gosh, Nick Offerman. That's right, Ron Swanson, Nick Offerman. Uh, break, Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones? Well, Breaking Bad, if only because it ended way better. Game of Thrones was awful for the last two seasons, which shocked me to my very core because it was so so good for like four or five seasons um should i get a betamax no no although betamax does come into play if you guys are watching servant on apple tv plus uh, betamax comes into play there that's pretty fun um uh marathon live stream with breaks yeah uh well breaks for you guys I, that's the thing is it's it's a marathon. I can't take a break. I mean, I maybe go pee, but um, all right, cool. All right, I'm gonna end it there. You guys been going been going for well over an hour. My kids are gonna get home from school soon, so uh, so I gotta be ready for that. Um, thank you so much for watching. Really love having you here on these live streams. Uh, looking forward to seeing you all next week. So uh, yeah, enjoy your weekend. Go Mariners. Make the playoffs. End that drought. I know you're all cheering for them just to, to help me out. I really appreciate that. So thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.